So once you download the project from GitHub on unzip the file, it will be presented with a kind of folder like this. What you want to do is double click this blue icon here, that is the actual Xcode project file and it will automatically open up Xcode. So in this tutorial, I'm going to kind of go over the actual layout of Xcode and just the basics here. Um, Xcode is kind of broken into three windows, kind of the left pane which is the navigation pane, the middle which will kind of file viewer and the editor and on the right hand side you've got the utilities bar. So on the left hand side here, which is over here, but oh sorry, by the way, these are all controlled with these kind of panel views here. Once they're highlighted, they'll hide and kind of show the windows. Anyway, on the left hand side here is the navigator. Here you can see the project file itself. And um, I've tried to organize the project as best as possible. So here where it says source, this is where all the code will go. So this is broken into the scenes, which at the moment we have two or one scene, which is the test scene. Um scenes are broken into well actually all um Objective-C code is broken really into two files, a header file which is .h and the kind of implementation which is the .m. I may be wrong with the .m stands for. Um, we've got the platform um, specific files here for example for iOS, Android and Mac which you'll be able to build your project for. And of course there's some extra files here. I've also added in an import file. So as I said each one has a .h file which is the um, header file. This import file here is something I've created which is where it will um, store all our header files and it makes it easy then to import and use kind of global classes, object classes, and stuff like anything that we put in this kind of um, file here we'll be able to access them in other projects. We've also got the resource folder over here you can see I just have a few files in here I have um, the background which you'll see in the project itself when it's built I have to see if badge is shown in and then we have I've organized this here to be kind of generic folder here and that's for kind of um, the actual platform specific stuff such as the icons here. I'm actually controlling this by the way just with the arrow keys and moving up and down and then left and right to kind of expand and hide the uh, or expand and collapse the folders. So you can see there's the icon there for Android, here's the icons for iOS and they're all included here. I'll go into a later video or in a later video I'll go into how you can actually all change all that type of stuff. So again we'll just collapse it here. And we've got the library which is of course Cocos 3D and we've got some other stuff which you don't really need to go into too much detail on. So on the right hand side here which is as I said the utility bar. These are actually excellent here if you click on this part here it is the code snippets. And these are unbelievably brilliant. I'll go into these in detail in a later bit. But what you can actually do is you can create your own code snippets. So for example I had some set up for... Um, for example, in Protectors Development, and what it allowed me to do was create code. I could drag it in this window here, and I could actually reuse this code over and over again with completion kind of um, shortcuts and stuff like that. So you can see here I have ES message show, <laughs> ES message system show. So what that does is it lets me show the kind of system message that was in Zenforms with just a quick um, shortcut here. So you can say message. I have a few here, so I have message show with talk and stuff like this. Slide away. Um, update and update with talk and these were basically to allow me to like for example start a conversation with NPC, show with talk all I was pressing there is the tab button and of course it would drag it all in and that was all that code done and that's all I had to do and I could show the NPC to talk here, I could show the message box and all that type of stuff okay so up here is really important here if we go up to the top left here this is where your project is We've got three targets, we've got the base project for Android, we've got the base project for iOS and the base, base project for Mac. Now if you want to build for any of these, you can of course, let's say we build it for the iPhone, similarly come up to iOS, we select let's say the iPhone 6 device, it's already selected there, and we literally just hit the play button. So what that will do is it'll build the code, assume there's no errors, it'll build it successfully, and then run it on the actual simulator. And there you go, it's popped up. It shows the launch image first, which is kind of the little image I have here, and that's the project then in itself, and that's the test scene running. So I just kind of have the background drawn. The there's two labels here, there's kind of a header label and a footer label. So if we go into the code here, and again I'll go into detail on this in later videos, I um, draw a background, which is here, and I position the background. I actually scale the background first so the background will fit the width of the window. And by default the it's here, I have a size that weight is greater than 480 by 320 because all the resources I'll create are for the original iPhone times one. Of course, you can create HD files, so I'll go into that again in detail later on. But like I scale here so it fits the window, I position it in the center because the anchor point of files in the center, or if the sprite is in the center, I'll go into that again in detail. And then I literally just add it to the scene, and then that's where you see the background. I have the label here, you can see I have a string set up, um, a string is type of variable for text. 
and I can see I have CPMS project and the kind of two little dashes and you can see that's what's drawn here. So I'm not going to go into too much detail on that now but what I will do is show you how kind of basics of variables. One really important view here is this bottom view here which is the uh, debug view. If you get it when it comes up like this just click this little icon or click this little kind of divider here and drag it all the way across left because the left side is not too important. We can drag it up, we can scale it. Of course we can do that with every view, we can scale it. But this actually just debugs everything. So what we can do here is and I want you to practice this as well, is come down here in between after I've added the label and down here as well. Now you can see there's a lot of this kind of double slashing and kind of it's in green text. These are called comments. So anything you put in here is it doesn't affect the code but it's it's for yourself to look at and it's great for um, explaining things as well and like what's actually the code is doing. So you can put whatever you want, whatever you want here in this um, in the comment and it will not affect the code at all and it's just great for stuff. So it's great for um, if you want to like, let's say um, add sprite, so add an image um, position sprite and then add sprite to the scene and then what of course is you can create the sprite there, we can position the sprite in there and then we can add the sprite in there which is kind of actually what the background does here, you can see the sprite is created here and um, it's positioned here and it's added to the scene here. So this is kind of, it's, the comments are just great for explaining what you're actually doing. Um, another cool thing is is the um, for logging stuff out into debugger is you can use an NS log and I'm pressing tab by the way for when it says the uh, it kind of completes it for you so it's like NS log and you can kind of see it's kind of suggests what to do just press the tab button on your keyboard and it will come over and for a log it needs to have a string so for a string we've already declared one up here actually if we get the string here we can say NS log I think this might work I'm not too sure if we say NS log and we just put in that file what will happen okay I got rid of the bracket there no that won't work <laughs> okay so if we say NS log, you need to put this kind of at symbol here and put in the quotation marks. We can put a uh, hello world, which is kind of the default project thing. We can build it. Your project will run. And if you look in the debugger part down here, it should say, and there it is actually here, it said it here, it says hello world. So this kind of logs out what's happened. So you can see as the project's getting set up, it's talking about everything it's setting up and set up the window size and the surface size and all that type of stuff. The um, frame interval, which is 60 frames per second. But you can see here we've logged out the hello world and it has, like, it actually displays here in the debug. But what's really cool is you can debug or you can debug and show different information you can even show variables so variables are things like integers which are we can declare as ints you can say int for the variables by the way declare the name first or sorry the um, type of variable first then show the actual the name of the variable and then do what it's um, equal to so Again, I was just having fun with comments here. So if we say int is a number, so we say int, and we say, we'll call it my number, and we'll say equal to three. Now, I believe uh, it was Red City on the form, he said that he was getting a warning. So you can see we're getting one warning, and it's saying um, unused variable my number, because we've literally just created the variable. So we can say create variable. We'll say create int, we'll say to be specific. So create number, and uh, we can say, okay, now log the number out. So we can say ns log and put in your quotation marks in the at symbol and say my number is um, actually say equal to now do this cool little trick here do a percentage symbol and i and come across at the end of the um, thing you'll see here we're getting another warning here if you look at it, it says uh, more percentage converting to data arguments or whatever it's saying there um, we're going to pass it my number so when you do percentage i it will actually log out an integer you can say a percentage um, at as well and it'll actually log out a string and then a string which will go into a bit more detail in a bit. So if you go to, at the end here, after the quotation marks, do a comment and say the variable, my number. It's already there again. You just press tab, that will fill this in. We'll rerun the simulator again. So again, you can see here, I just press stop to stop the program and play again to rerun it. If we look down at the log, there it is there, my number is equal to three. So what we can also do is we can create a string. We have a string up here, which is the header file. So we have a string header, but I'll show you how to create one anyway. So ns string is, we'll say, uh, get rid of this. So we'll say, 
create a string. Again, it's always great to comment and you should really put comments above your file or above what you're doing above the line. You can also see what I've done here, which is sometimes it's okay to put it at the side of the line if it's kind of just a quick description of what it did. But we'll say create a string and we'll say ns string. So ns is kind of the object C way for declaring objects. So like there's ns object, you can see ns log as well. I'm not quite sure what ns actually stands for, but um, it's kind of just the object class in Objective-C. Now for strings, we say ns string, and we have to put this asterisk here. That stands for pointer. Don't worry about it too much, but anything that is that ns followed by kind of ns array, ns object, ns string, you have to put this asterisk. It's also used in, um, you can see for Cocos 3D class here for a label, which label displays the text, and for the sprite as well, which is an image, you have to put the asterisk here. For, so it's, it is kind of confusing for, for int, you don't need to do it for certain variables. Um, bool, which is, um, bool is a switch or a yes or no, wait, um, whoops. Um, switch is also another thing as well. We can say bool, um, my bool, and we can just say is equal to true. So they can be equal to true or it can be equal to false, put in um, capitals, or you can even just say my bill is equal to yes, or you can even say it's equal to no, again with capitals. Finish off everything as well with this kind of terminator symbol here. Um, that kind of just ends the line of code. So anyway, we're gonna create this string. We'll say again, we'll say my string equals, now this is where it gets a bit weird. You have to say ns string, put in these kind of square brackets, say string with format. So what we're actually doing here is we're calling a method. Again, put in the, uh, to call it basic string, is the at symbol with the two quotation marks. We'll say uh, this is some text. And again, we'll get the warning saying, if you look up, you say it's not being used, my string. So again, we can log it out. So log, log out the string. So we just say ns log my string equals and do the percentage at as I said at is for the text so we'll say um it's there and again of course just to log out the variable because it's put in you need to just the comma and you say the actual variable name so we'll say my string and we will build and run it again and again looking down at the debug kind of panel here you'll say there you go you so it says my number is three and my string and it says this equal or equal to this is some text so that's going to be it for the basics here um, I'm sure you're going to have a lot of questions, but of course this was kind of just an introduction to Xcode and then some basics. It is, as I said, recommended that you do kind of have some kind of basic understanding of programs. So you do already understand what an int is. You do already understand that what a bool is or again, like that kind of stuff. And like, it will really help. Of course, if you have any questions, ask in the thread that will, will be provided. We'll have our own section for these set of tutorials. And as well, what I want you to do is to do some homework. So your homework is to download the project file from GitHub, this very simple homework by the way. And I want you to literally create what I just done in this video. So I want you to log out your own variable. You can call it whatever you want. You can give it its own value. You can mess around with it. Get, create your own string. And I want you to send me a screenshot of your code and send me a screenshot of you actually outputting the um, thing here. So if you're on a Mac to take a screenshot, you just do Command, Shift and press four. And you'll get this kind of um, view here to kind of like this, um, kind of cross symbol and what you want to do is just click and drag you'll create the window that'll create a screenshot it will save to your desktop and then just upload it to something like image shack i'll link to it in the description and show me on the form and just show me what you can do another interesting thing you could do as well which is not part of your homework this kind of extracurricular you can see here this has this string file here and it's the cpms book that was the header file for the label so if i just kind of separate this i'm not going to do this in the base code again you can do this yourself and you can also see here the at and the test scene, that was the footer file. You can change this text here, and if you change this text, it will actually reflect it, reflect it on the project. So again, I don't want to quite show you how to do it, but if you can do it, you just build and run your file once it's done. What should happen is the header file, which is where kind of this text is, that will, or the header kind of label, that will change whatever you change it, and this will change whatever you change it. And you can press Command S in the iPhone simulator, and that will take a screenshot as well, and I want you to show me that as well, if you want, again, that's extra curricular. So that is it for this tutorial. As I said, of course, you can control it here. If you have an iOS device, you can change it to the device once you hook it up through the USB port. And um, you can also build it for the Mac if you want. You can build it as a Mac application, which I'm gonna show you here real quick. So again, you literally just select the target for the Mac. It will build. If you go down here as well, I'm not too sure if it actually outputted the file. Oh, I got rid of the NS log. I was wondering where, what happened to the file there. And you can see this is the Mac application. You can see there it is actually running as a map 
our Mac file, we can go into my uh, thing here. Of course, I've got my Zen Forms, the Zen Forms game itself. We've got the Zen Forms revamp, and of course, we've got the base project, which here you can see it is running on iOS. It's running on Mac, and if you have an Android device, you can bring it up to Android. You need to set it in developer mode. I am. Um, you can find Google if you type in like your device name and say how to set in developer mode or whatever. It will tell you. It's generally through the sentence, and you have to go into the and um, maybe the about section, double tap it or some weird stuff, but we'll set it in developer mode. Once you do that, you'll see your device actually displayed here. You literally just tap it and hit the play button and give it a second and it will build your device and you can play around with it. So that's it for the first tutorial of the import tutorial series. I hope you enjoyed it. Of course, join the discussion on the forum. Of course, ask questions below or whatever as well in the comment section. Don't be embarrassed, don't be afraid. The whole point here is that eventually the end goal is that you will have the tools to create your own 2D game.